people who help fight human trafficking. What are some tips you have for spotting illegal activity and reporting it? I worked as front desk for a hotel. Had a couple of experiences with this. Look for groups of 2-3 where one person does all of the talking. Specifically when the other, s, look scared, are overly covered, cringe when the talker is speaking, or look under the influence of something. Ensure you get it from all parties when you suspect something is going on. Note down their room number and names given. Trust your gut. What we call a gut feeling is a combination of millions of tiny factors you might not knowingly be aware of. Tiny details like hitched breathing, micro expressions, specific lying tells, environmental factors, etc. These all add up and let your subconscious mind make connections that your general mind might not. Trust that feeling if you suspect something is wrong and contact the police to inform them of a suspected human trafficking issue. Both times my gut told me to call it and I ended up regrettably being correct. These specific details are great. Thank you. I am an intern at a human trafficking task force. It really helps just knowing the basics because I had no idea everything it entails. There is sex trafficking, the one we all know the most about, labor trafficking, and organ trafficking. Trafficking happens through force fraud, and or coercion. Trafficking is something of value that is being exchanged. The something of value can be food, shelter, clothes, money. You get the gist. There is also the age issue. Anyone under the age of 18 that has sex in exchange for a good is automatically considered a human trafficking victim. Even if the legal age of consent is 16. A 16 year old cannot consent to commercial sex. It also does not matter if they say they're 18 and have fake identification proving they're 18. If you are caught paying someone that is legally 16 for sex, you are human trafficking. My organization is holding a webinar on this soon, and we also have social media where we explain the issues. If you guys want to PM me, I'll share our socials. Visualization helps us fight HT, and so do donations if you can we are a non-profit. Thank you for reading. I worked on countering human trafficking for the municipality of our capital, EU country. Here to add that in addition to the types mentioned above, there is also the type of trafficking for forced criminal activities. Think of children being forced to steal or con, not rarely by family members, or people being forced to cut, or house, cannabis. I've told this story on here before. I don't fight human trafficking, but I'm a teacher who had a student who was sold by his mother in exchange for drugs. He was kept as a sex slave from ages 311 when the FBI uncovered a sex ring and found him. He had never been to school. He had never even been out of the house. These sorts of crimes are not being committed out in the open. They are very well hidden. You will never see these children, and no one is missing them. This poor boy couldn't read or write. One day, he got a 100% on his spelling test. He asked me if I could call his mom and ask her to take him back and he'd be a good boy from now on. Child sex trafficking is unfortunately all too common, but it's become a very hidden problem. This is heartbreaking. Here in Spain we get a lot of women from Eastern Europe and Sub-Saharan Africa. Some pay for their trip to Europe this way. Some are blackmailed and some are lured offers of jobs like cleaning, or low-level administrative jobs, secretaries, paper pushing, and end up on in a roadside brothel. If you ray a young woman in a poor area of Eastern Europe and you get an offer for an easy job in Germany, France, Spain or the Netherlands, be very suspicious. I was working in China teaching English. One of my fellow teachers was blonde and good looking. One day she told me excitedly she had an offer to marry a Russian man. He was going to pay her $30,000 to marry him. All she had to do was travel to Russia to meet him. We were in Kikihaya, about 2000k from Russia. I managed to talk her out of it. I think I may have saved her life. In Latin America. Look for maids who have been with a family since they were children. In my country they are called criadas. This is form of servitude that closely resembles slavery and begins with a child, usually female of a poor rural family being brought to live with a moderately wealthy urban family. The promise of a better future than what the parents could provide. These kids don't attend school and perform house chores all day and are paid in food and living quarters and sometimes the promise of money that the bosses are holding for them. 
They grow up this way so when they are adults they are afraid to leave. They don't know any other way of life. But the bosses don't often acknowledge anything wrong and they claim that the cryada is grateful for having been given a better life. I sadly have to admit that this happened in my extended family. They were bosses to a cryada who would be 75 years old today. Only after all my aunts died and my cousins inherited the cryada. They acknowledged the wrongdoing and imagined for her to have a pension and a house and never have to work again and be treated a respected member of the family. But it was too late. She only lived as a retired person for 5 years before dying. She never learned to read. She never had children or a husband or any type or significant other. My wife used to teach piano in an affluent suburb. And one of her students had an elderly nana who was openly treated like dirt by everyone in the house. She began to suspect this was a case of trafficking slavery. But shortly after she took a moment to talk to the old lady about her situation. The family got rid of the old lady and subsequently fired my wife from teaching their kid. I actually have a story for this. I am by no means someone who exposes sex trafficking for a living. Just someone who had an experience. I lived in a very sketch apartment complex in Phoenix. My wife and I generally keep to ourselves. So we didn't really have a problem. We at first noticed that there were constant visitors to our immediate neighbors. Their front door faced our front door. We figured maybe they were selling weed or some crap like that. Do you? We don't give a flying frick as long as you don't bring trouble to us. Then we noticed it was only men who would show up every 15-20 minutes, stay for 15-45 minutes and leave. At this point we're thinking whatever, if a chick wants to use sex work, we can't give a crap. Then we noticed the pimp and the other girls in this apartment. They looked young, never left the apartment unless escorted and would only stick around for a couple of months before a new girl was brought in. When I say young, I mean they look maybe 18. We only started realizing during quarantine and were home all day. The men would constantly knock on our door throughout the day and night. Which is what caught our attention. Anyways. We called Phoenix PD. They knocked on the door and said they couldn't do anything without us providing photographic evidence. So we sat on our patio one day and discreetly starting taking photos of all the men coming in. Call the cops again and provide evidence. They knock on the door again. A customer walks out and hauls butt. The girls all haul butt. The pimp comes by after and bangs on our door. We stayed at my dad's house for two weeks while a sex crimes investigator surveyed the apartment. The pimp helped them move out and the investigator was able to find their new spot. We moved the frick out very shortly after because we were afraid of some sort of revenge. This is long. But pay attention to the people surrounding where you live. No need to be a nosy person. But when we actually started paying attention, we saw what was going on more clearly. We were concerned because none of these girls spoke any English, weren't allowed out of the complex without an escort and seemed to be replaced constantly. You are awesome and thank you for going the extra mile. I hope they were able to help those girls out. Our country, Philippines, is unfortunately the global hotspot of child cyber sex trafficking in the world. Unlike what's usually portrayed in movies, these children are not kidnapped by syndicates and sold to pedophiles. Sadly, most of the sexual abuses happen at home. Parents or guardians are the ones exploiting them to get money. I am not directly involved in the actual rescue or fight, but I do work with non-profit organizations that provide shelter and therapy for rescued victims. I've met and talked to some of these children. Many of them didn't even realize that they are being abused, especially those who were not raped at all. They were groomed to think that just getting nude in front of the camera or touching themselves for pedophiles is not bad. I think one important thing is that kids should know when they are being abused. It should be taught in schools. It can save lives. There's an app you can download called Traffic Cam. Anytime you stay at a hotel, upload photos of your room. Those photos are incorporated into an artificial intelligence algorithm that helps identify locations of trafficking victims via background details. One thing to notice sometimes it can happen in your own backyard, it can be the people you least expect. I remember as a kid, maybe age 10 or 11, I used to play at one of my neighbor's house, down the street. The girl who lived there was 2 years younger than me, so around 7 or 8. And I knew that her family was poorer than ours, 
cause the house was smaller and sorta in shambles and very dirty. I played there all the time, and she would always say things that were odd or sexual and it would always make me uncomfortable. My gut told me something was wrong. One day she casually dropped that her brother had molested her and that his friends paid to use her body as well. I remember not being able to really process the weight of what she told me, but I knew it was wrong. And I ended up telling my mum and my mum called CPS on the family. Not sure what ended up happening to her because my family moved neighborhoods. But it still really creeps me out to this day. Knowing I had sleepovers at her house when her brother and his friends were over and I could have just as easily been taken advantage of. This type of thing is not uncommon at all. Whoa. That's really awful. Even more awful how common it is. For university age students. Be very cautious with foreign summer work arrangements in resort cities abroad. With foreign resort city summer work as the bait, university age students are promised a work visa, arranged legal work, round trip travel, and lodging in a distant foreign country for an overall desirable resume building experience. What is delivered is basically forcing work hours far in excess of legal amounts, substandard pay, being housed in subpar conditions and threatened with holding of summer end return travel unless the person complies. The uni student's parents likely can't afford to send money to rescue their child. For an example, a Polish university student studying international business comes to the US to work for a summer. What really happens is the student comes to the US, get lodged in a single grubby motel room with 11 other similar age people, and is forced to work 12 plus hours every day rotating to various hotels doing contract housekeeping. She isn't super confident with her English, absolutely does not know how to alert authorities to her issue, and basically has no money. Parents don't have the funds to wire her to get her home. This a real case where this woman was rescued because she was cute and a local older gentleman with nothing much else to do but talk with random cute girls asked about her story. She spoke English well enough to tell her tale. The kind gentleman and his generous friends realized how illegal and messed up the arrangement was. The men assisted the woman and her two friends by moving them in with a nice family, helping them get legit summer jobs, and raised funds to pay for flights for all three girls back to Poland. The men reported the sketchy arrangement company to the local authorities and pulled enough strings to stop that small illegal operation. For those working in hotel services that contract lots of foreign labor in areas like housekeeping laundry, just keep an eye out for those folks. Maybe strike up a conversation to make sure they are okay. Most of human trafficking is not the movie kind. It's more the kind where an ethnic restaurant brings over a cook from their home country and they have to work unreasonable hours to pay back for the trip. Or maybe it's a maid or a construction worker who works below minimum wage and can't have their passport back. So look for people who work long hours at sub-legal wages. One thing to know. No traffic child looks the same. Here in the UK and across the world. Children of all ages, genders and cultures are subjected to human trafficking and exploitation. Vulnerable children, like the ones on the streets, are targeted and move both within countries and across borders. Those trafficked here into the UK are often taken from areas of poverty and made to go on dangerous journeys, traveling thousands of miles away from home with men being abused and exploited on the way. On arrival at their destination, the children can be coerced into cannabis cultivation benefit fraud and forced begging others are forced into sexual exploitation or domestic servitude and the children do not realize that what's happening to them is wrong i speak only for uk as i am a man from there an increasingly high profile form of child trafficking is county lines this involves predominantly british children being groomed by their exploiters who then coerce them into buying and selling drugs often across the country. The exploiters purposefully prey on the most vulnerable children and teenagers, grooming them and gaining their trust over time, often by giving them expensive items such as designer clothes and mobile phones, before forcing them to deal drugs to pay back the debt that they have incurred. They may be too fearful to speak out as they have become reliant on their traffickers to feed and clothe them. They may also have been subjected to physical, sexual and emotional abuse or do not know where to turn for help. Children who have been trafficked from outside of the UK often speak little or no English, making them even more isolated and dependent on those exploiting them. An almost perfect scheme. There you go. My husband works with a children's home that deals with human trafficking. 
As said above most have to do with horrible work conditions but there are some that are actual sex trafficking and he said that he finds most of the victims very quiet and their eyes are always darting. Constantly looking around for the next horrible thing person to happen. He comes home and cries and tells me this job is the most rewarding he's ever done but it is going to break his heart and his hope for humanity. Please tell your husband thanks for what he does. From an anonymous redditor. That must be such a difficult job. I can't even imagine. I don't think I could hold myself together at a job like that. I'm coming in over a thousand comments deep, but I had a loved one pulled into the sex trafficking industry as an adult. So, I can offer a couple pointers for spotting adults who are being sold as prostitutes. 1. Missing shoes. It's hard to run away in a city barefoot. Blisters are a dead giveaway. 2. Not carrying a cell phone. Identification. Or the purse or wallet to put it in. Their pimp likes to hold these hostage to prohibit contact with the outside world and to make it difficult to purchase long distance transportation. If a guy comes into a tattoo shop with multiple women, either at once or separate trips, and makes the women get the same tattoo. This may be specific to the area of the US I was in, but the non-profit I worked for had us go to tattoo shops and give them pictures of known tattoo designs that traffickers make their victims get. Most shops were happy to take the pictures and post them in employee only areas and train employees on protocol when somebody came in for the tattoo. One was really crappy because they didn't want to miss out on the money they make from doing these tattoos, which made us assume it was a lot of requests for the tattoos. When I was young, I had neighbors from India who had a family servant. I was really young at the time and was friends with the family's children. Their maid cooked all their meals, cleaned their house, etc. and slept on the floor. What I remember is the family would go to India every now and then and I guess they promised her a better life in the US if she worked for them. As a result they took her passport and she was pretty much confined to their home. No holidays, no weekend breaks. I don't even think she was paid and had a bank account set up. She was a very sweet nice lady who made amazing curry. Anyways she wasn't allowed to converse with anyone outside of the home. However we all carpooled together after school so she would come to my mom's car to get the children and she would talk to my mom and even make my mom food. After a while, two years I would say, my parents and my neighbors started to catch on. My parents made a plan to get her out and escape. She left and we took her to a family friend's place where she lived for about a year. She would go to the local Indian community center and I believe she met a man there. She eventually moved out of our family friend's home and I believe she got married. I hope she's doing well and every now and then I think about her. Beast mode parents. Where I live, human trafficking is a big problem and there was a huge bust at a hotel not too long ago. Usually hotels, motels, and airlines are trained to look out for signs of trafficking. Red flags include those who are very scared or nervous around specific people or talk like they're following a script. Those who are targeted usually come from broken homes or poor countries with the promise of a better life for how all of their problems can be solved by doing X. It can also include being showered with expensive or luxury gifts as a start of the luring in process. I work for a crisis center that provides services for sex trafficking. Honestly, if you think something is off or smells fishy, it probably is. The perpetrators are so good at grooming that the victim doesn't know that it's abuse a majority of the time or they have been groomed to deny it. A lot of what I see with adults is super unhealthy relationships and they are told if you do this, we will give you this. It's hardly ever them being taken somewhere, it's usually a partner or family member. For instance, they want a better life so if they have sex with people for money, they will get better stuff like clothes, education, etc. For kids, they are groomed to think that the person is better for them than their family or are being abused horrifically by their family. It's freaking sad. My wife is an attorney who works on the advocacy side of human sexual exploitation. And in overhearing her meetings the one line that struck me the most, and that I had never thought of previously, is, there's no such thing as an 11 year old prostitute. The idea being, when you're 11, you're a victim, not a criminal. So to answer your question, the best way to spot it is to contextualize a legal activity, in this case, sexual, and realize when someone is doing something because they're being forced by someone, that is, a trafficker. 
question for anyone who has experience on this sort of thing. Around 2 years ago, I stopped for gas on my way to work. I saw two guys who looked to be in their late 30s or early 40s stopped in a parking spot to the side of the gas station building. There was a young girl that looked to be around 15 years old with them who looked nervous and scared. One of them gave a stack of cash to the other, who took the girl away in the other vehicle. In that moment, I thought I was sure I was seeing a trafficking exchange. Something about it just seemed off and rose red flags for me. It did not seem as if it was some stepdad handoff or anything like that. I called 911 and gave a description of everything. To this day I still think about it and wonder if I did the right thing or jumped to conclusions too quickly. Did I? You did the right thing. Even if you were wrong that's something that can be easily clarified by the proper authorities but if you were right, you just saved a child's life by calling 911. The Covenant House and NOLA takes in kids who are subject to this and at times subjected for years. The NFL player Ben Watson was involved in helping rescue kids. He did a very moving piece about the plight of some of these involuntary situations. Might want to look up the story. I was dumbfounded at the extent and the effort adults will exert to exploit these poor kids. The story still haunts me and I watched it years ago. Yeah, I think I have heard of that. I have great admiration for those who help on the front lines. When talking to a child pay attention. If whenever a parent or adult walks past them or interacts with them and their upper body freezes, arms to the side like the queen's guards, watch out. Often when children are abused they flail their arms so their abuser will grab or grip their arms, either to sedate, attack, or pacify. So if a pastor always makes a kid freeze their arms and pull in as if to be smaller, be aware and look for other signs. That's a really good thing to watch for. Thank you for the advice. I used to work with children 12-17 that were sex trafficked, as well as adults. First of all, assume anyone that looks underage is actually underage. If you see those images online, report them. Pimps travel around a lot, keeping girls on the move. Unlike what most people think, all of the clients I worked with, thousands, knew their abuser, either a friend of a friend, a relative, a step family member, or a person they met online. So check who your kids are talking to online on any platform. They also stake out places like group and foster homes. Honestly, some of you can help out by paying adults for your pee and adult content versus using poorly curated sites. Secondly, I worked with adults that had been trafficked to work in massage parlors. They would be brought in from various countries including China and Vietnam, then have their passports taken. One of our clients got murdered by the traffickers. Finally, there are people in sweatshops, restaurants, etc. There are have been numerous high profile cases here in the Bay Area, including one by my house. I don't have tons of tips, just a bit of education. Education is still very valuable, thank you. I'd urge anybody that travels to pick up the app Traffic Cam. It allows you to upload pictures of your hotel room, which are cross-referenced with a database of explicit underage pornography to hopefully locate human traffickers. I spend over 100 nights per year in a hotel for work, and take a few pictures of my room every time I check in. I wish I'd known about this before, I just spent the last 4 entire weeks traveling for work all up and down the eastern United States. I volunteer with an organization called Unbound Houston. Many of these comments are spot on it's not child abductions we need to be wary of, it's situations where a person isn't allowed to speak for themselves, in hospitals, doctors offices or any point of service industry like hair appointments and the like. Situations involving runaways or even teens who seem happy but don't really have control of their life choices or don't seem well cared for. The overly sexual young child, the overly shy quiet kid, the overly aggressive teen. All these can be warning signs of sexual exploitation. Basically if it feels off investigate. If you think you can't or don't have the ways to investigate report it. The worst thing about human trafficking is the human indifference to it. I'm guessing you're probably looking for information relevant to location, but if I may share, if you decide to travel, whenever we all can safely do so again and your destination is a hotspot for human trafficking, SE Asia, Thailand, for example, be very aware of giving money directly to children begging on the streets, 
or other vulnerable appearing adults. While their pleas will pull at your heart, consider donating. If you choose to, physical goods like food, school materials and other things that aren't of super high value. But often, the cold truth is, is that these children are usually being forced by their relatives or non-related adults to beg and try and make a profit that will then be taken by their trafficker, especially if they're out begging during hours they should normally be in school. I always remember that who wants to be a millionaire movie, the traffickers would blind the kids with acid to make more people feel pity and give them money, which would go to the owners so to speak, messed up all around, since it's perfectly possible it's a real thing. People that go to the or urgent care, likely rare for these folks, with a person who will not leave their side and speaks on their behalf, could be a parent or translator, could also not be. There was some news article about it a few years ago at some place in Michigan I want to say. I don't work for any organization that fights this but I have one tip for you all. If a kid you don't know calls you mom, dad, brother, sister, uncle, aunt, anything, you play along. They are likely in a dangerous situation and need help. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.